Welcome back. We're here at the Gary Wade Show. This is your boy Adam Nelson. I'm here with my co-host Gary Wade. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? We've been talking uh, Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. You know Juneteenth. And and I, Adam, I'm not sure. Were you out at the I at Emancipation? I couldn't get out there. You couldn't get in. The so police won't let me in. Yeah, the police wouldn't let some people in. It was kind of it was kind of crazy. You know, it was a free concert, mm -hmm. but they wasn't letting people in. And why they wasn't letting them in, I don't know. But in any event, we we've been talking about um, the holiday itself. Mm -hmm. You know, the holiday itself, Juneteenth. And I heard your sp perspective about uh, shouldn't be celebrated. So, well, tell us why you think that. Well, I think because Juneteenth, okay, it's supposed to be when slaves was so-called free, right, in Galveston, Texas, right. right. But I think also if you do your research on Juneteenth, and anybody you got guys could call in, correct me if I'm wrong. Juneteenth was when the slaves were free, but they still had a lot of individuals that was under slavery that was being sold because of Juneteenth. So it basically the slave masters was profiting off of slaves, even though they was quote unquote supposed to be free. Right, right. I got you. Well again, I'm not familiar with that part of the history, but here's one thing that piqued my interest when you just said that. And that was the slave masters profited from selling the slaves. Absolutely. And that's always been my approach. Juneteenth is a holiday designed for black people or African Americans, I believe. Mm -hmm. Everybody else can celebrate and benefit from it, but what happens to black people when it comes down to us getting our hands on the money? So look, fun fact, in the U.S. Constitution to this day, black people are considered as property, and they're considered as three-fifths human. So if you look at anything in the Constitution that's awarded, well, like you said, financially, it does grant to Americans that qualify, but if you're qualified or, or labeled as property, you automatically disqualify yourself. Well, you don't disqualify yourself. You automatically disqualify just by what the Constitution states. You know, Adam, I, I, uh, I'm i not familiar with that part of the Constitution, but again, you know, uh, I'm not saying that that's not true. Mm -hmm. And I want to do some research on that, but what comes to my mind when I hear that I also hear in the law that all men are equal under the law. So I don't know how we could be contradicted as three-fifths property. Again, I need to look at that, but mm -hmm. uh, the Constitution teaches me that all men are equal. Now, we ain't treated equal, right? but that's what the Constitution says. Right. If I'm not, and again, like I said, I'm not a constitutional scholar, so if somebody out there no uh, yeah if we have a historian that's listening could you please clarify because i know for sure that in the constitution it states that that uh black people are considered as property so when you said three every human should be created every human was should be created equally you got to be considered as a human first right well i, I i'm black and i am property but i'm god's property mm -hmm. okay so <laughs> I, I claim that I'm a prophet, but I'm God's prophet. I'm not no property of no individual. Right. You know what? Because if somebody owned me, they wouldn't, you know. I'm <laughs> oh, boy, rebellious? Look, let me tell you, no, <laughs> no. Like I always say, in America, a black man is either Kunta or Toby. Mm. And just sounding like somebody owned me, I'm going to be called Toby. And I'm going to have a real problem with that. So <laughs> I ain't got no Toby nowhere in me. I'm running. They're going to chop my foot off if they catch me. Look, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, it's, did you go out to the Juneteenth celebration? I did. I How did. was it? It was off the hook. It was a super duper duper production. Whoever okay. put the production together was awesome. You know, again, I did have some issues with like you had with parking. Mm -hmm. They didn't let a lot of people in. You know, uh, it was some some uh, pushback, but you know, thank God Almighty, I knew a few people and I was able to get in. Okay. Not able to just get in, Adam. I was able to get in on some VIP. Action. I got you. Yeah, so I kind for that VIP. Yeah, yeah. I always I always need to try to work your jelly <laughs> if you can. You know. So also, also uh, uh, one wanted to correct you on the um four uh on the three fifths. Mm -hmm. The three fifths of no, it was superseded by the Fourteenth Amendment in, in eighteen sixty eight. Okay. Yeah. So there and you that's, go. Yeah, it was. That's not the dope. Yeah. That, okay. that, that, yeah. That, that uh, again. Appreciate it, brother. That didn't sound right, you know. But uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I I'm not gonna argue with you because I don't, you know, I don't argue about things I don't know the facts of. But anyway, man, you know, uh, Adam, I just think Juneteenth is 
a first step to a holiday. Mm -hmm. But we need to not stop throwing wood in the fire. We need to throw some more wood in the fire and keep the fire burning because now we need some money. Absolutely. You know, I mean, just I asked this to Amanda and, and Marco. What's freedom if you ain't got no money? It's nothing. Or if you ain't got no access to no money? You ain't got no opportunity to get no money. It's you nothing. Know? It's, just a, it's just a prop. It's just a name. Yeah, I mean, again, Juneteenth, again, I'm not complaining about the holiday at all. But what I seen at the event was a lot of people celebrating by dancing and singing and eating. I ain't hear nobody saying, "Woo, man, I'm finna get action at this next 500,000 or 500 million or something. You know, we got to get our mind, guys, on more than just working, just a job. But you know what? That's important, what you just said, because the mindset, that takes me back to the mindset of an individual. Like you said, you out there, you of course you want to be amongst the people and celebrate, but you're thinking about the funding. It's like how can all these people that celebrate Juneteenth, how can a percentage of these individuals get an adequate amount of funding that the city of Houston is providing for us? And look, you, you man, th it's my understanding that the city of Houston financed the whole concert. Mm, okay. Now, I don't have no idea of how much money it costs, but do you think that money could have been better used on doing something else? You know. Maybe. Which, which goes to what I say about our people. We want to party. We want to eat. Mm -hmm. We want to drink. We want to do all of that stuff. But when it comes down to putting in some work, the game changed a little bit. Everybody got an excuse. Right. Nobody want. Everybody wants to eat, but nobody want to work. And the word teaches me: if you don't work, if you don't work, you don't eat. You don't eat. That's right. So how you figure? And, and guess what? You know, black people are so in love with the word, so in love with God. You know, not just black folks, white folks too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, white folks too. But black people, you know, in our culture, we're going to go to church. Grandma going to make sure we go to church, make sure we know God, make sure we know where our blessings come from, all that kind of stuff, which is good. Mm -hmm. But what happens when it's time for us to line up to get some knowledge, get some education, get some work, get some of that kind of stuff? What happens? Well, I think, I think at the same time, you know, I think religion – it's a beautiful thing, you know, if you use, if it's used properly. Uh, but it was either one or the other. Either you had religion with no money or you had money with no religion. They, a lot of us don't know how to do both because they, they, they mix up this term, uh, for the love of money is the root of all evil. They mix that term up. So they're thinking, okay, well, if I make a lot of money, I'm evil. But that's not true. It's said for the love of the money. Yeah. You know, you, know, you know, Adam, let me tell you something. I don't think, and this is my personal opinion, you can have your own opinion, mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of money defines a person or individual. I just think if you have enough money to do the things you need to do, mm -hmm. then you are free. If you don't have enough money to do the things you need to do just, you know, a basic life, right. then you're not free, for instance. How many people you can believe out of ten that's got a house note of fifteen hundred dollars or two thousand dollars that don't know past two months how they gonna pay they mm, a lot? Yeah, people got house notes and they got jobs. Mm -hmm. And any given day, you can walk in and they can tell you, uh, you terminated. Right, and now. And then <laughs> now, are you free? No, you're, you're not free. Right. You know, or if you got three or four kids and you got to make a choice between paying your auto insurance, your homeowner's insurance, or buying your kids some food, mm -hmm. you ain't free. You got to make a choice that's not free. Now, let me put it in perspective. Mm -hmm. If you had a source of finances that was available to you, that you had to do some work to get to it so you can be free, would you be more apt to work? Depending on the that's individual. A, depending on the individual, and right. that's what I'm getting at. Individuals that I've seen in our community on that day, the vast majority of them, what I've seen was Juneteenth was a party to them. It's a celebration, yeah. Just a celebration. 150 years of emancipation. Okay, and? Right. What has happened between the 150 years and now? 
and like you said earlier, it's a mindset thing. Like you said, that you use the term free, freedom. I think freedom starts in your mind, right? Then economics come after that. Well, Adam, what if you locked up in jail? You can still be a free man. Okay, but you can't move around and do you, as well. Physically, you're not going to be free. Okay, so 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 again, mm-hmm. what's the difference between locked up in jail and locked up in your mind? It's, it's, same thing. You're yeah, still same thing. locked up. You're Absolutely. still not free. Absolutely. You're still not free. Right. And so what I say to our people is we got to unlock our mind. You know. Right. We got to unlock our mind and look past what somebody just going to give us, what we can get for free. Yeah. Mm. Say that again. What we can get for free. <laughs> because everybody likes free. Absolutely. Including me. But there's a price to pay for free. Right. So free is it's synonymous with freedom. It, and if sometimes it's free is really not free. Because Absolutely. If somebody and we're is, not free. If somebody is giving you something, for instance, like these stimulus checks. Yes, we are not free. And that's what I'm getting at. Right. So it's like it, we think it's free. We think it's given. Nothing in life is free. That's just how the principle is right. set. I nothing agree with that. in life is it's free. free. But in some people think, oh, I got this free money. I'm getting this. I'm like, it's gonna come back to you some kind of way. So, Adam, uh, uh, I was I was getting ready to talk to Amanda and Marco about this reparation, but we okay. uh, had to move on. But anyway, I'm gonna ask you this question: mm-hmm. If the government gave black people, and I'm gonna just throw a number out, ten thousand dollars reparation, and and we jump in on this one, ten thousand dollars reparation. Mm-hmm. How many of them going to have it a year later? A year? <laughs> <laughs> now, reparations as far as how money, much. Just how, money. No, no, no. I'm saying, yeah. well, ju- oh, just money? Just oh, money. That money's going to be gone. It's gone. How long <laughs> is it going to last? Uh, sh- probably, depending on, I would say, I would say, I would say a third of the people will spend, will, okay. it'll be gone in six months. Okay. I would say another third, it'll be gone in two years. And I say the other third, will it'll be gone in five. So now, let, let's, let, let's, let's multiply that money and let's say 100 grand. Mm-hmm. Okay. 100 well, grand ain't even enough. I know. That's what I'm saying. So, 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 so look, when you, your reaction was exactly what I wanted to see. It makes no difference how much money you get. Yeah. Mm-mm. Do you know what to get, do with the money when you get it? And also, we talked about it. Uh, we talked about it that you can't just it, reparations cannot just be money. money. Right. Right. It has to be the access. It has to, no, it has to be system, uh, system, it's be a systematic. Systematic form. Change. Yeah. Systematic yeah. form Ex- of, on every level: a- housing, finance, uh, education, everything, mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. And so, so Marcus, believe it or not, what you just said is what I always preach. Mm-hmm. This been going on in our community, black people community, since the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Right. See, Martin Luther King got the act signed. Yeah. But the mind ain't changed other people. Mm-hmm. And here's what I believe. I believe back in 1964, mm-hmm. white people was not trying to hear it. Right. So they assassinated Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm. And that's when the parties flipped their ideologies as let well. Let me go let me go a little further. Right behind that, they kill John F- and F- Robert F- King. And Robert. Right. Yep. And the black leaders, the vast majority of them, guess what happened to them? Mm-hmm. They ran back to the pulpit. Mm. So now, when they ran back to the pulpit, very few of them stayed strong. People like Louis Farrakhan, mm-hmm. John Lewis, that was a few of them. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesse Jackson a little bit. That was a few of them. But the vast majority of them went back to the poor Oh, pits. and including disarming the Black Panthers. All uh, that kind all of stuff. That. All, uh, all that kind of stuff. And here's my point. My point is we got the ni- uh, 1964 Civil Rights Act passed. Ain't mm-hmm. nothing really happened since then. A few people in Excel, you know, a right. few black folks that got better jobs and stuff like that. But it ain't changed our community. As a no, whole. At all. It ain't changed our yeah. community. It's helped a few people. Mm-hmm. So what are we going to do to help our people? June 19th, Juneteenth is a holiday, a national holiday. Right. Did it help more people? It probably did. Now, what's missing? Money. How about some more money to go with that? Money How about and, and, and systematic reform. And, 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 and yep. Marcus. Remember I talked to y'all about Executive Order 13? Yep. That is a part of it. 
people don't realize that President Joe Biden signed an executive order to go along with the June 19th uh, uh, law. Yeah. All we got to do is move on it. Right. If you read that executive order, it clearly states, it clearly says that the President of the United States in his first day in office authorized the Office of Management and Budget to tell all the secretaries mm -hmm. to basically open up the coffers for racial equity. Now, what I don't like in the in the executive order is said for people of color. You didn't say black specific. Well, we need to know: Are you talking about yellow, brown, <laughs> black, or are you talking about black? But even if you're talking about yellow, brown, and black, where you at, black? Step up, step up, step up. I say the only like the only people like black and Native Americans. That's it. Right. That's well, it. I agree with you. But you know what, Marcus? Even if you look at all these rules and laws, the tribal community, the Native Americans getting a whole lot. Oh, yeah. They got, land. Listen, they getting land. Oh, they yeah. got land. They got way more than what African Americans got. And mm -hmm. not only that, they also get a chance to ride in the same lane. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not only do Mostly. They, mostly. Mostly. No. No, no, you know, because, um, because there's like about, I think there's uh 12 Indian tribes in North Dakota right now that's going through that Dakota pipeline yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They squabbling. And I would say the only, I say the main ones that's been benefiting from them is the Seminole tribe in Florida because they haven't passed the uh, sports get sports bend law right. because they had because it has to go through them. Well, again, even with Native Americans, they are getting funds from the government. Absolutely. I mean, straight from the government. Why black people can't get nothing straight from the government blows my mind. What happened? What did we do along the way that we did not get a chance to get money like the Native Americans? You got tribal laws. Well, listen, guys, I got to take a break right now, and we got to go. Uh, is it time to go? Yes, no. yes, we're wrapping it up. Whoa. <laughs> wait a minute. I, what happened? Is the hour gone already? Yeah, basically. Man, <laughs> I tell you what, man. You know, we have some hot topics going on, man. You listen to the Gary Wade Show on 102.5 Amazing. Your Do Good, Do Good Station. We'll see you guys next Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Be there or be square. Love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. We out. Peace out.